So in this video, what we're going to cover off is how to do the fundamental overcurrent protection configuration using CMS. Now, in the previous videos that we've covered off, we've done uh, most of the work that had to do with the log reading and the and the transfer of settings between the device and the computer. So if you want to catch up on all that, you can go and do that in the previous videos in the series. But what we're going to look at is that in um, our offline settings here, which is the local copy of the stuff that we're working with, we can then bring up group one. So in the Noja Power Recloser system, you have four different groups that you can use, and they all live up here. And this is where you edit the settings that are going to go actually into the controller. So for most of the protection and control engineers that are out there, this is probably going to be where you spend most of your time doing the configuration. So when you click that, you'll see it will bring up this window. You might choose to work within this windowed mode or, of course, just like a conventional um, application where you can expand it out to cover the entire area. I actually like working with it in this windowed mode because it is fairly important to stay on top of how many windows are actually open at any given time. Okay, so for overcurrent, that is the OC component here. So overcurrent, that is where all of the elements associated with the overcurrent component live. Now, you'll see what we've introduced here is this principle of a reclose map. So according to the reclose standard, you have this ability to do up to four shots to lock out in any given reclose sequence. So the reason why you've got four columns here is that for each one of these reclose um, stages, you're basically specifying what the device should do in terms of time response or current response at each stage along that cycle. So let me explore that a little bit further. OC1 is the master element. It's the baseline element that everything else happens off of. So if you wanted to do three shots to lock out, for example, this is exactly the configuration that you would have. On the first trip, it's going to do a trip to open and then a reclose based on this first reclose time over here. And then the second one, based on whatever the overcurrent pickup and trip time configuration is, it will open and then do this second reclose time and then close again. And if the fault's still present, it will go to locker based on however long that particular element takes. So this is the basic principle of that reclose map configuration. So if you wanted to actually do, say, a four shot to lock out, all you would do is just convert this last one to an R, and then you've got reclose, 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 lockout. Fairly simple, right? So that's how you configure the baseline. But let's say you wanted to do something a little bit more involved. So you wanted to do, for example, a, a fast, slow, slow trip as a consideration. That's why we have this OC2 element. So the OC2 is really a modifier. So what I might do, I'll just bring that back to the lockout there. So we've got reclose, reclose, lockout. Now our goal is to do fast, slow, slow. Let's assume that OC1 is configured to do that slow trip. So the response is the same every time, although if you would only use that by itself, you're just going to get slow, slow, slow as your trip. What you can do is then over the top of the OC1 element, introduce a new one, which we can set to reclose, to operate faster. So what happens is that when the system is in the reset state, so it's ready to do a full reclose sequence, for that first trip, the OC2 element will operate faster than what the OC1 will, even though they're both active at the same time. So what happens is that for the first trip, the entire system will trip on this faster operation, and then for the second trip, it's still disabled. So now you're going to get fast, slow, slow to lockout. That's how you do fast and slow tripping. So what I might do, I'm just going to quickly save that as our configuration, and then we can drill into it. I think one other thing before I quickly go in there is I want to cover off this OC3 element. OC3 is your high current lockout element. So conventionally, this is set to be what your transformer's short time withstand uh, current is, so to stay just below that. The idea being that you want it to be the absolute limit for, say, a three-phase fault uh, fairly close to the substation to ensure that you're not going to exceed the time um, current characteristics of that equipment. So this will probably be set much, much higher than what your conventional line current grading configuration is over here. But you're going to probably trip to lockout straight away or do maybe one reclose at most for that particular configuration. And again, it's the same principle that applies. So 
if you've got OC1, OC2, and OC3 all configured at the same time, OC2 is going to be your fast trip, the thing that mediates, say you've got a lightning strike and you just want to clear that initial arc, so you're going to have a fast response in that first one. But if it isn't, and it's something that is of sufficient magnitude, it might trigger an immediate lockout response. So if the device operates on OC3, even at stage one, it's going to go straight to lockout, rather than count through the sequence like the previous ones do. And it's the same thing that happens, say for example, that you have a double line to ground fault that happens, which is a fairly severe event. Um, but what that might do is then cause a, a mechanical failure of equipment that causes a three-phase fault. So if that happens earlier on in the piece, in the reclose sequence, you're probably not going to get any sort of reliability benefit by doing continuous reclosing. But likewise, if it does evolve into that three-phase fault, the current's going to be so much higher that it probably won't warrant a reclose response. And that's why, no matter what the step is, as soon as the current exceeds this lockout threshold, this will probably be faster than any of the other elements that are up here, leading to the breaker operating faster. So this is the fundamental about your current configuration within the uh, reclose map. So I've saved that now. What I will do here is also bring out the OC1. So if you wanted to actually configure each of these individual components, you just click on the element and it brings up your curve configuration screen. And here's where you can select your protection curve that you're using and you can even drag, I'll just quickly close out of that. If you wanted to, you could drag this around and you'll see that it updates your protection settings based on whatever you drag it to throughout the configuration there. Um, and you'll also see that this is the uh, OC1 element and then OC2 being this guy here and then OC3 being your high current lockout. So you see at the moment by default set to 1000 amps with 100 milliamp tripping time and the others are at 300 amps. So you'll see that, let's say we wanted to put this guy to 300, um, but we also want to do a fast tripping curve. So I won't change this one. I'll go across to um, OC2. So this is the one that's supposed to be faster. And I've just put a definite time um, on there. But what we might do is say that that very first trip is only going to be 100 milliseconds. So we'll bring it all the way down there. So what happens is now on the very first trip, you're going to get a 100 millisecond response as soon as it goes over 300 amps, uh, and it will beat this curve that sits further up. But then for the second trip in the sequence, you're only going to get this guy acting, and then the high current lockout still if it deteriorates into a three-phase fault. So you're going to get your fast response on the very first trip, and then a slow response after that. Now I'm happy with those settings, so I'm going to click OK here and that will then commit those to the database. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but I want to do a quick introduction to this DE element, uh, and that is directional element. It's actually to polarize these particular um, elements in the direction that is designated by the plus or the minus sign on there. We're going to cover off directional protection in a later video, but the idea is that if that's unticked, this element is going to operate only on the magnitude of the current. So like this, in this condition, we don't actually care whether it's upstream or downstream. If you're going to get a magnitude of current that exceeds this pickup level, you're going to get an operation on that. But if you tick it, it's only going to operate in the direction that that particular component is going to designate. So in this case, the forward direction. And that is determined by this directional element configuration below that we'll um, work on later on. So. Likewise, the last thing that I want to cover off here is this idea of single shot trip. And what that is, is in the recloser, when it's configured to operate as a recloser, and the reset time, this thing over here, has sufficiently timed out, then you're going to go back to the full reclose sequence. If that reset time hasn't come through, or the auto reclose sequence, um, or auto reclose itself is not turned on, then the device is going to do a single shot to lockout. So the reason that there's this radio button is to define what the response is of the system when you've got different trip times at different stages along here. Basically, when you're doing a single trip to lockout and you've got fast and slow curves, what do you want the thing to do? In this configuration here, we had the fast, slow, slow trip. So if I've got SST to set to 1, it means that this is the only trip we're going to get so basically, you're just going to get a fast trip to lockout even on just that um, lower current value. Whereas if we change it to SST2, when it's in non-reclose, 
you're going to get only that slow trip response from OC1 or a very fast one if it goes to that high current level. You're going to completely ignore that uh, fast current trip that's at the front end of the uh, front end of the sequence. So that's something that tends to get a lot of confusion in the field, but hopefully that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to understand that. So stick around for the next videos where we cover off NPS, Earth Fault, Sensitive Earth Fault, Neutral Admittance, and all of the other fun protection features inside the Noja Power RC10 and RC15 controllers.